Hi. Uh, in this clip, I'd like to start off by addressing really what I think, frankly, is the poor uh, return on investment that uh, the companies have gotten on, quote, analytics over the last, uh, gee, 13, 14 years. I went and looked at my first analytics package, if you will, for distributors in about 96, 7, 8. I forget exactly the time. It was a little company that it is no longer in its existence now, but uh, it was being sold as a bold-on add-on package for a lot of uh, uh, independent ERP software vendors that were going after different kinds of distributors. And when I looked at it, I said, "Well, this is this is sort of uh, sexy stuff, you know. You've you've taken all the financial numbers and you've sliced them and diced them every different way you can think of, and you've covered all these great graphs and so forth. But what's missing are insights because financial numbers are not root cause drivers of profitability or service value. They're, they're just sort of emergent symptoms. Um, they're actually conventions to pay taxes on time and to uh, comply with generally accept, accepted accounting principles to borrow money from the bank on an asset-based ba lending basis. They have nothing at all to do with who your number one niche of customers are, um, what the one-stop shop best assortment of items providing best fill rates for that niche could be in a given marketplace, uh, what the rest of the service metrics would be that would add up to a service value equation for that niche. Uh, it doesn't let us know the huge cross subsidies that exist between customers and between items. We all intuitively know we have some customers that are very profitable because we know we have customers we lose money on and some chronically. We've been losing money on for a long time. Uh, so uh, we, we, don't, we don't get any insight in that. And to do that, we would actually have to build uh, a cost to serve or do model for different uh, uh, service processes that go through our business so that we could capture the net profit or loss uh, on every line item event. If we had LIPA, line item profit analytics, that kind of uh, granular what I also call quantum profit, the smallest indivisible unit of profitability, uh, then we can take that and roll it up in different ways to create different kinds of ranking reports. Uh, but the ranking reports from most profitable customer to un least uh, unprofitable customer or items or suppliers or sales territories, a lot of ways we can do this. Um, that's only the beginning of wisdom. It's the, we're, the, the fact that super profitability is at the top, that's still a symptom. What's the root, root cause drivers of that profitability? We have to get to that level. So you have to have the, the, the right deep dive cross-reference analytics to figure those stories out. And then from that, we can come up with new plays. And for the new plays, we'll need tracking reports and so forth. So we, we have to have a, a service value uh, understanding and a service uh, math understanding of our business uh, before we can design a really good analytics uh, solution and then take a good uh, profit improvement development journey, if you will. Um, so I think that if we can understand a little bit more about line item profit analytics and the cross subsidies between elements in our business, super profitable customers and unprofitable customers, items and so forth, uh, then we're onto something. So that's what this section is dedicated to. And uh, we're we'll start off by talking about a must-read book in the next clip. Thank you.